Hey everybody. Hi. How you doing YouTube? So, it's been a little while. Um, time between videos is kind of crazy. The reason for that being that I was doing all the editing on my Mac Pro. Uh, and my 2008 Mac Pro I have upgraded and it's a pretty awesome powerful computer. It worked great in town. The only problem is, is it sucks our battery bank pretty quick. Yeah. It's about 360 continuous watts. Uh, so, that, we only had the three panels going and uh, we had some serious, I would say serious issues with the solar system. Um, you know, I'm probably blowing them out of proportion, but I get so nervous and anxious about this thing because, you know, if we, if we ruin the batteries, we don't have any more money. You know, we already spent life savings on this stuff. So. We, have everything. we have no more money. You know, we go check to check and uh, with all the small little costs, it's not really, hasn't started balancing out yet. Um, so, I recently, my, uh, my two, our two daughters, sorry, yes. my two daughters, our two daughters are in uh, school and they've both gotten uh, new computers, new MacBooks, and uh, so I got one of the girls' old MacBooks, uh, computers, thank laptops. You, Andrea. Yeah, thank you so much, because it's awesome. It works beautifully. Uh, a couple of problems with the keyboard, but you know, it's just patience, and I need to learn more patience anyway, so that's awesome. But it, it does everything we need to now, and it's only like 85 watts, so it's you know a much better deal. Uh, part of the update, I guess, um, we have upgraded the solar system a bit. We didn't hit float for about a three month. weeks to a month, yeah, probably a month, probably even a little bit more than a month. I just keep trying to downplay it so it doesn't sound too bad. Um, I didn't put the panels up on frames until early September. Yeah, probably a couple weeks ago. Yeah, um, I think it was a few days before, you know, fall was supposed to officially start. Uh, we only had the three panels, so it was a 750 watt bank that was only producing about 500 and 550 and 560 watts peak. Um, during the middle of the summer when I had the panels laying flat on the top of the trailer, it worked beautifully because the sun would basically crescent over the uh, over the panels and then get a full day of sun. Um, and when we realized once we put the panels up on frames that, you know, we were getting more sun because of the time of the year, but we were getting less sun because the sun didn't cross the panels as, as long of the day. Um, so we got nervous and we were going to start ordering new solar panels, uh, more solar panels to add on to our system. We had originally, I think, costed out four or five when we originally designed the system. Yeah. Um, and we knew that we were going to have to buy a couple more panels to get to where we needed to be, but we started with three and it really did a great job in the summer. Yeah. Um, so a friend of mine tagged me on a Facebook auction. And this guy was getting a couple of solar panels off of an old solar farm. I guess they had broken. Maybe a windstorm had come up, smashed the glass on the panels. Wind farm didn't want them anymore. Sorry, solar farm didn't want them anymore. So he was getting a good deal on them. So I called the guy on Facebook. Um, they are Canadian solar, 300 watt panels, um, which is you know an amazing company. Uh, great reputation for solar panels. Obviously, if the solar farms are using them, they they know what they're doing. Um, but this guy was putting a two-part epoxy pour on the panels and selling them or trading them or just getting rid of them. But he had a lot, and he still has a lot. So me and Sheila thought about it, and I did a little bit of research. I went online about the two-part epoxy pour, found out it was the best way to protect against UV light um, and not get yellowing of the screen. I found out that panels with shattered glass basically take in the, uh, the same amount. Uh, the difference is after a, a solid good pour, you're only losing about 2.7% of your panel's uh, output. So I was like, yeah, you know what, I'll take three panels, 450 bucks. And that sounds like a lot, but right now new panels are still going for about $1.12 a watt. And that's really cheap. Um, so we had ordered one panel and it was going to cost us about $340 because they discontinued the panels that we had already bought in the summer. I mean, it's that quick. The technology is changing that quick. Yeah. So I would have had to upgrade it to 270 watt panels, which would have been within a 10% difference, which I talked to Midnight Solar because they're an amazing company and they uh, just really having a good time with their product. Um, talked to them. And they said 270 watt panels would have been fine, would have been within the 10%. Uh, and then I called them back and I'm like, well, what about you know 300 watt panels? And they're like, well, worst case scenario. And I asked, what's the worst case scenario? What's the system going to see 
worst case scenario outside of that 10% efficiency. Guy from Midnight Solar said basically the system will just receive every panel like a 250 watt panel. Like your like the lowest model panel you have, the system will see every panel like that. So in my head, all that meant was I'm still doubling my system. $450, 300 watt panels. Sure, the system is recognizing them as 250 watt panels, but for the price I'm paying, I don't give a care. <laughs> Try not to swear. Um, so we we bought them. Yes. And we bought uh, them. and you know they took a big hit on the paycheck and uh, the budget, but but we the really yeah. has been outstanding. Oh, this is the third day. The, the this is just the third day that we've had them. Yeah. Uh, so. First night we installed them at around seven o'clock, seven thirty, and it's yeah. October first today, so it's it's getting you know the sun was going down. Yeah. Go on, tell. Them. What? Well, you were gonna say you were gonna oh, say. Oh, so um, yeah, the second day was um, cloudy and sunny in northern Ontario, and we maybe got like. Hours of sun. Of sun. And it wasn't even early afternoon or early morning sun, it was late afternoon sun. Yeah. And uh, I got home later than Dan because I had some stuff to do. And he was all excited. He went he came out of the the room, his bunker. Yeah. And uh, he's like, We're in flow. We're in flow. For the first time in over a month we are in float. Yeah, it was, it was really exciting. For those people out there who uh, <laughs> you know are doing this, solar is an amazing system, it's super fun. And yeah, I mean I danced around for the last two days saying we had float, we had float. I was just I was stoked. Yesterday we got so much sun because it's decided to be sunny. If you can't tell from the blinding sun in my eyes right now. Um, that we were able to equalize our batteries for the first time since probably July. Yeah. Which I know, you know, that's really pushing it. And I did. I bought a I bought a solar system that was sufficient at peak conditions. So when you're doing the math, don't do the math for peak conditions. Or at least be prepared to do what we did and buy more panels because you're yeah. gonna need to. So today is the first day after equalization. Well, we were and able to equalize all day yesterday. Yeah. Like from, like we got with the new panels, we get sun earlier than we ever have, and we get sun later than we ever have, and we get we're hitting now we're hitting 850 to 900 watts, and I haven't put those panels on frames yet. So when those panels hit frames, I'm probably looking 1100 to 1200 watts in. I'm sorry for interrupting. No, no, no. Go ahead. You know more about this than I do. I just think it's just awesome. Though. And I love hearing you talk about it because that makes me excited. So, in saying that, today is our first day after flow, after equalization. Um, the Whizbang Junior has now recalibrated itself and stopped giving us wacky readings. That's a good point, just to jump in again. Since we didn't hit float for a while, the Midnight Solar 150 and the Whizbang Junior became uncalibrated. This is one of those things that when you're reading up on solar and you're you're, you're going to invest in a system and you're reading and you, you hear things like uh, what we were just talking about. calibration. The, the the calibration and it says don't trust your SOC, don't trust your volts, don't trust your SOC. Get a hydrometer and actually go in for your state of charge and your batteries. You know, look for your voltage and your batteries directly. And this is something that we found very serious when we were starting to realize that my voltage readings on the Midnight Solar 150 and my Whizbang Junior State of Charge readings were off quite a bit. Uh, Whizbang Junior was saying like you know 60%, where my State of Charge controller was saying 24.9, uh, which I think is probably 65 to 70%. But that, you know that's a small way off. But by the time it was done, right before we had actually gotten into float. Yeah. The voltage meter was like 25.3, and the Wizbang Junior was still at 60-64%. So never trust your state of charge. Um, use it as a rough guide, but this is a huge lesson that I learned. Use your hydrometer, hydrogometer, however you pronounce that wonderful word, and really go in there and make sure that you know what you're doing. 
Okay, sorry again, because that was really important. That was a good point. That those were out of out of balance. So today is the full day where the system is all back to normal. Everything is all wonderful, where we get to see exactly how much wattage, true wattage, we're bringing in. We can see how much true percentage we are. And if we hit float again today, oh, we will definitely. I mean, our system should be really high, so float should be inevitable. But like Sheila was saying, it'll actually give us a, a more accurate reading now that everything's calibrated. So, and, and, and our, like, our data log in the midnight 150 should be, you know, a lot better for us to start actually taking the readings and get to where we need to be. So that's where we're at. Super stoked. Super stoked. A couple of other problems have come up. Oh gosh. Um, the well. Yeah. The well has to be dug. Yeah, two things. Obviously, one lack of experience on my part. Two, the well did amazing. It did it did amazing for the first three months, four months? Yeah, but we've had a really dry fall. Very dry fall. Um, if you can see the colors of Northern Ontario, it's beautiful. It is. The gorgeous colors, but it's been a dry fall. There's not been a whole lot of rainfall, um, but a lot of sun. We're just starting to get cool days. I mean. So the interesting part about the well is we're still getting a ritualistic, common fill of the well for about two to three feet. No matter what, no matter how dry it is, no matter what anything else. I mean, maybe a foot and a half to two feet. I'll, you know what, I'll say that. A foot and a half to two feet, our well is continually being able to change over. If I sit out there every four hours and I go and I flush that foot and a half into our tote, six hours later we'll have another foot and a half. The problem is, is it's extremely brackish. It's like it's a different color, it's brown. Yeah. It's not good. No, it doesn't smell bad. No, there's no smell to it. We're chlorinating. It, looks, it actually looks like iron. It looks like it's just full of iron. Yeah. So I think to get deeper into whatever aquifer we're in, or however yeah. else, with lack of experience on my part, we well, need to needs to be, well needs to be either dug deeper or there needs to be a second well dug. Because water is totally a, it's an essential for life, well, for everything. But come winter, where we get our water now, I don't know if it's going to freeze. I don't know if that wonderful line that comes down the mountains doesn't freeze up and you just don't get any more water in the winter. I don't know. First experience. Yeah. So we have to be prepared for it. We have to do something. And don't think we're without fresh water. Go back to our other videos and yeah. check out where we our water solutions and uh, water issues and solutions from. It was our last video. Um, yeah, we, we yeah. do have fresh spring water daily. Yes. So we're not surviving without water. Uh, that'd be ridiculous. Um, however, it is far and few between for uh, clean, cleaning, uh, personal cleaning, and, personal uh, hygiene, dishes. Yeah, stuff like that. So those are all important. Um, all the things that we, you know, with experience, would have known before we got into this. Exactly. Good learning curve for all of everybody out there who is joining us or just joining us or following us along or whatever you're doing. Yeah. Keep watching because we like it. Uh, suggestions for solar, just quick to, to finish this little section off. Um, <coughs> learn your angles for summer, fall, spring, and winter. Uh, the fall and spring uh, angles for your panel and tilt can be usually the same if you go for a three movement system. Um, if you have a sun follower or a catcher, that's awesome, where your, where your panels actually rotate. I don't have that. Uh, so now I've set up the system on a, I'll show you later. But I have plans for those three different tilts. Right now we're at 42 degrees for uh, spring and fall. Um, in winter, I believe I have to go up to 51 to 56. And I'll double check my numbers. And then in summer, obviously down to like 18 to 32, I'll have to double check those numbers. But get prepared to tilt your panels. And remember, when you do tilt your panels and you're getting out of midsummer, the sun's not going straight above you. So you're not going to be able to get 8 to 10 hours of sun daily. That's not going to happen. Now that the art. Our Canadian daily average that we get when I did the numbers on you know all those wonderful online calculators when I was doing the research is where we are we get four hours of usable sun on average a year per day. Um, so now with the panels being on tilt, I definitely realize what they mean by that. There's you know I'm getting maybe eight hours of sun 
but only four hours of that is peak sun. So really keep that in mind when you're tilting your panels or you're putting your, you're placing your solar panels. For the well, the chips, our system was, I think our system was done the right way. I think that the well to the choke, the pump to the house was all done properly. Absolutely. I feel like the hot water tank needs to be moved into an interior thing uh, because I don't want it to freeze this winter. But other than that, I feel like the only issue that we could have foreseen or solved is going a little bit deeper with the well. Yeah. Uh, keep all that stuff in mind. And we're going to go in. we got a couple more things to put on videos today because we're actually going to get started this again now that we have the, uh, the MacBook. Our, uh, our internet's coming back up. I can travel with the MacBook and I can upload videos from work. Uh, while I'm doing work, I can do, use the Wi-Fi and just sit the computer down and press a button. And then go off and do my business. Uh, so hopefully we'll get some more videos out. Today's the day we're hopefully either moving the boat or getting the boat set up. We have a couple of uh, uh, rain barrels that we're going to try to pick up. So let's see if we can actually transfer some water, uh, fresh water into our tote. Yes. Um, and uh, we got some fitting up and stuff to do. So have a great day YouTube. Probably put everything else on another video. Those are just some uh, updates uh, and solutions that you can use for the future. And we'll talk to you soon.